Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com, and we're going to be talking about our spring timeline. I was asked to make a video on this after we got through with the book of Revelation, and we are still in the 22nd chapter. We haven't quite made it to the end of the book, but I plan on doing one more video to sort of wrap up our study through the book of Revelation, but I wanted to take a brief uh a detour here just to talk to you about our spring timeline uh, there's still a lot of great, uh, great interest in uh, in that timeline and at least on our end but I've got some interesting facts to uh, to reveal here to disclose concerning Torah calendar now Torah calendar is has been always has been the main source of Hebrew dates, uh, fest that marks festivals and feasts and dates. Uh, it's been, uh, to us at least, it's it's been proven to be one of the most reliable sources for marking the Hebrew calendar days. Uh, back in 2016, we began looking at Torah calendar, and we were very impressed with the accuracy of Torah calendar. Um, I published a video back in the, I believe it was somewhere around the fall of 2018, 2018, the, the revelation sign appeared in September, the fall of 2017. And in 2018, I published a video where that I at least talked about from a timeline perspective, I talked about how. Uh, interesting that the dates ran across the timeline for the spring of 2021 and many people were uh, I guess somewhat taken back by that because they they thought well 2021 is a long way off uh, a lot can happen between uh, now and then uh, you know it's uh, actually what to be honest, I had some people write me and say, Steve, I don't see how the Lord could wait until 2021 to return because, you know, uh, I just don't see how things could get much worse. Well, uh, at least in my opinion, we've seen a an increasing digression in just cultural society uh as far as morality goes as a whole we've seen quite a bit in just those past two years now that also begs the question i mean uh you know and you know well couldn't we just uh, blow ourselves all up just blow ourselves to kingdom come and rebuild from the ashes and start all over uh before the Lord comes. And of course, the answer to that is absolutely sure. We, we can do that. We can, uh, 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 there is, there are no, listen to me, there are no, you know, biblically speaking, uh, as far as the Bible, as far as scripture is concerned, there are no, and don't let anybody tell you that there are, there are no signs left to be fulfilled before Christ returns. None. He can return at any time. There's nothing that's holding that, that return for his church back in real time. So I, what I want to talk about, what I really want to focus on in doing this update, and I, 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 I've thought a lot about how I could make this as simple as, as possible because when you start throwing out a whole lot of facts and a whole lot of dates it can get complicated and it, unless you've been on my end of this looking at this constantly day in day out for months with a, on end it's hard to get a, a, as, as good a grasp on this and so but I want to reassure you that, that everything that I say in this video, what I, 
what I'm not going to say is I'm not going to say the Lord is going to return for his church on such and such date. That's I'm not going to say that. There's a difference. You need to take note of the fact that there is a difference between me saying dogmatically the Lord's going to return on a certain date and the timeline, the days along a timeline from point A to point B or from beginning to end that those days and those dates along a timeline, they fall on dates that are are just impressive, to say the least. And so, as a possibility, it, it would just be really interesting if the Lord came back according to that timeline, because you've got some some there's there are aspects to that timeline that make that timeline interesting now if you had a timeline that spanned across a number of dates which uh in which you saw that the dates had no significance whatsoever they didn't fall on any important dates or anything and they were just run-of-the-mill dates nothing interesting about it it doesn't mean that the lord can't return on on such such a timeline as that either if you're going to spend a lot of time on this subject you you're going to learn a lot of things really quick and one of them is is that when you even talk about a timeline it's going to have a specific number of days along a timeline. It has to. God doesn't lie. The Bible is, is, is infallible. What we read in Scripture itself is unchangeable. And so when Scripture talks about 1290 days, that 1290 days has to go somewhere along the timeline. When it talks about 1260 days... The same is true. When it talks about, uh, say, for example, the two witnesses witnessing for 1,260 days, or the Antichrist reigning for 1,260 days, or 42 months. When it talks about there being 1,335 days from the midpoint to the beginning of the kingdom, we were given, and I've said this repeatedly, we were given the exact number of days along a timeline, and very few people seem to want to talk about that. Now, that also begs the question, does that mean that there can't be any gaps in between? In other words, uh, 1,290 days from the time that the church is raptured to the midpoint. And then, and then from the midpoint, the Antichrist rules for 1,260 days. Does that mean that, that there can't be some, some gap, some, you know, just like the rapture occurring and, and there being a gap where that the tribulation period doesn't begin for a certain amount of time? And, how, and if there is a gap, if there's a possibility of a gap, what, how long would that gap be? How big would that gap be? Uh, could there be a gap? Could there not be a gap? And that sort of thing. I'm a firm believer in the fact that God is not the author of confusion. He gave us a specific number of days. And I think he meant what he said. He didn't say, well, I said 1,290 days, but I didn't really mean 1,290 days. And so... We've got these segments of numbers, 1290, 1260, 1335, and so on and so forth. And they have to go, we have to arrange those in the proper order. That's the second step. We have to, we have to make sure that we don't, we put, you know, each segment of numbers, section of numbers in the right place. Uh, May 17, 2021 is a, a, according to Torah calendar. Now, if you Googled this, you'd probably get a different date. If you Googled Pentecost, if you asked Google, what is Pentecost 2021, you'd probably get a different date than Torah calendar. Everything that you hear me talk about is going to be, is going to be referenced from Torah calendar. Now, could Torah calendar be right or wrong? Well, of course. Uh, 
this is what makes this so intricate, all of this. It's all about the reliability of sources. Can the sources be trusted? We know Scripture can be trusted, but can Torah calendar be trusted? That's yet to be proven. But I'll say it again, I've never came across a more accurate source for uh, these dates than Torah Cal. Now I want to say something else about the creation year. It needs to you need to understand that no one ever has nor ever will be able to firmly state with absolute 100% conviction what the creation year was. Nobody. Uh, Sir Isaac Newton couldn't, Usher couldn't, none of the people in the past could do that. None of us today can do that. No one in the future, if we're still here, will be able to do that. And the reason for that is, is that even though we were given the certain numbers of, of years related to genealogy in the Bible, we were given, like, for example, how many years that so-and-so lived before he died. He lived and he died after so many years. And, and, and so we know these, these ages, but what we don't know and what we weren't given was we were not given the months and the days that they were born. And so over a large span of time, that amounts to a lot of discrepancy. We don't know, we don't know exactly when it comes to many of, of these facts and figures exactly uh, the correct number. So all we can do is, and I, and I believe this is what Torah calendar has done, all we can do is refine our understanding of of all of this as we go along even make some modifications which we'll see i'll show you later torah calendar has done adjustments so to speak fine tune the watch so to speak so that we can get a, be a better concept of this time frame thing this whole idea also want to mention the fact that there are two seasons mentioned in Scripture, not four, not the uh, spring, the summer, the fall, the winter, like we uh, here in the Western world, we, we typically understand we have four seasons. We go by four seasons. Scripture looks at uh, spring and summer as one season and fall and winter as another. There's two seasons. We read about that in Psalms chapter 74. Thou hast set all the borders of the earth. Thou hast made summer and winter. Zechariah 14.8. Okay. Uh, in summer and in winter shall it be. Uh, you know, Song of Solomon. You know, for lo, the winter is past. The rain is over and gone. It just looks at it as two seasons. So when, when we talk about spring... We're actually really talking about spring and summer both, as compared to fall and winter. Now, concerning spring, the, one, the first thing, before I even get into even talking about any of this timeline stuff and the dates along those timelines, I want to remind you, refresh your memory. Some of you have heard some of this in the past, but, but uh, according to Torah calendars, when, when we did this timeline of ours back, like I said, back in the fall of 2018 we noticed that the first day of creation the date that the torah calendar begins and it starts is may 5 may 5 and the year that they gave was 3980 bc 3980 bc It shows Adam was created then on May 10. On the 6th day, he would, he would have been created on the 10th of May of 3980 B.C. That's according to Torah calendar. Now, if you go ahead and you look at the years in which Christ lived on that on Torah calendar, you'll see that they, they have a particular year that they believe that Christ was crucified. And they have that date as March 23, 
uh, for a crucifixion date. The Lamb of God is slain, March 23. And so he would have been raised then on March 26. And being alive for 40 days before he ascended, he would have then ascended on May 5. Well, May 5 was the same date that we noticed was the first day of creation when God said, let there be light. So we have, according to Torah calendar, we have an interesting connection there between Christ's ascension and God speaking the worlds into existence, where he said, God, where God said, let there be light. Of course, what's even more interesting then is if you go another 10 days, which you'd have to do from the Ascension to Pentecost, the first Pentecost when the church began, it takes you to March, or take, takes you to May, takes you to May 14, 14. Well, where have I heard that before? May 14, 1948, Israel becomes a nation again. And so now we have a date in which the uh, May 14 rebirth of Israel has a connection there. Date-wise, it has a connection to the first Pentecost. So the church begins, okay, on a Pentecost, on a, on a May 14, which, and then later down, you, you take, you run across time down through time to our present time uh, or our, our present generation or to, to the year you go go ahead to 1948 and you see that Israel's reborn on May 14th so you have the rebirth of a nation you have the beginning uh, or the birth you might say of the church that's associated with the same date as the rebirth of a nation that's that's what I'm trying to say when you read Song of Solomon uh, it's got spring departure written all over it uh, according to the tradition enoch was taken uh, which is a type of the rapture was taken in the spring these are again i want to want to point out the fact reiterate the fact that these are facts was enoch taken in the spring fact is that a fact i don't know if that's a fact the the fact that i'm referring to is is that there's a there is a tradition among Judaism, within Judaism, that Enoch was taken in the spring. That's the fact. Okay? So I just wanted to clarify that. Same with the crossing of the Red Sea. Okay? Spring. Nisan being the first month of the ecclesiastical year. Uh, Nisan, that, that would be spring. That's the first month. Of the ecclesiastical, not the civil new year, but the ecclesiastical new year. And, of course, the sign of Nisan is the lamb. Okay, again, it's it's spring. We've got, there's, the lamb himself is associated with spring. Of course, you could say, well, the Passover was in spring. So that, well, that explains that. I, I've, I've always found it interesting that folks that the, you know, the Passover, the, the crucifixion, the burial, the resurrection, the uh, Ascension and Pentecost, all of this, all of it began in a spring, not in a fall. And to me, and I don't know about you, but to me, that carries a lot of weight as far as, as what you'd call evidence. And I'd put evidence in quotes as to, you know, uh, it just carries a lot of weight for the argument that the rapture is more likely to occur in spring than it is in fall or winter. Fall, winter, cold, dark, gloomy, wet, death, okay? Spring, new life, all right? In fact, the Hebrew word uh, Nisan means bud. In the Song of Solomon, uh, it's uh, it the whole Song of Solomon depicts the love that, that bonds God's people to him to to God 
Re redemption in the Song of Solomon is referred to uh, as the time that the buds were seen in our land, which means that the earth gave birth to a people who soon would flower. That's so we're looking at spring. It's just everything that you, you it seems like almost in every direction that you look, the rapture of the church has spring written all over it. And as I've mentioned before, when we begin a timeline, because of the number of days along a timeline, if you have a spring rapture, you would have a spring return. If you have a fall rapture, you would have, by necessity, you would have to have a fall return. And so it doesn't matter whether we're talking about the church or Israel. doesn't matter if we're talking about the rapture or the second coming of Christ. I believe it's it, they're both destined to... And this is just my own personal belief. They are marked for spring. Both the church and Israel. New beginning. Spring equals new beginning. Now there's a lot of other stuff that I could talk about, but I, I don't want to do that in this video. They're, they're just, it's crunching numbers. It's, it's a lot of numbers, uh, other numbers and some dates, but mostly numbers that is just going to, you know, clutter up, you know, the conversation here. What I want to talk to you about real quickly here is I want to, I want to briefly go over the dates uh, on this uh, timeline that we came up with uh, that we saw back in 2018 where that I didn't see anything in 2019 or 2020. It was only until I got when I got to 2021 that I saw this timeline that seemed to have some interesting dates along it. So that's what I want to talk about first. So when we begin this time looking at this timeline and, and we go back to the creation year that Torah calendar had listed, which was 3980 BC, we see that the first day of creation, when God said, let there be light, it was May 5. And our, our I already pointed out that the ascension of Christ later on in, in the years in which Jesus lived, or more particular, the year in which he died, uh, that ascension took place on a May 5. If you count from Passover and you go, you know, well, he was raised from the dead three days after he was crucified. Forty days he, he, he was among the people uh, and... Then he ascended. That takes you to May 5. And I pointed out how interesting that that was. The, uh, so the first day of creation being May 5. Adam then would have been created May 10. May 10. So I'm, I'm getting ready to try to, to, to run these numbers and see where all this goes. And I'm writing this all down and I'm putting these dates and these, these numbers in order and everything. And, uh, and, uh, and what I realize is that if I begin the timeline on May 17, 2021, which is the day in which Torah calendar marks that day as Pentecost, May 17, and we go 1,290 days across the timeline to the midpoint of the tribulation period. And that 1,290 days can only go there. Can, uh, there's, there's no way the 1,290 can go on the second half. You can't have 1,260, then 1,290. It has to be 1,290, then 1,260. There, it's like pieces of a puzzle where the piece will only fit one place. Okay, the 1290 only fits up front. 1290 from that date of May 17, 2021 takes us to a November 27 midpoint where that I stated and I, and I went through a list of a number of things historically that the Jews, uh, what happened uh, with Israel on such and such date in history, uh, this date being November 27, and there was some interesting things that had to do with the tabernacle on November 27. So there was there was some uh, biblical tabernacle uh, information that was associated with that midpoint date. That was November 27. 
And of course, this is at a, t- at a time in which the two witnesses are killed, their bodies lie in the street. They're sending gifts to one another, and November 27 is right before Christmas. And so you throw that into the mix and say, well, that might mean something. And then, if you, and then from that midpoint, you've got 1,260 days in which the Antichrist is allowed to reign. He's given 42 months exact before the return of Christ. So if you, if, you, if you run 1260 days further along the timeline from the midpoint to the time of Christ's return, you have Christ returning on May 10. Whoa, May 10, the same day on the Hebrew calendar in the, in the creation year of one, creation year, in which Adam was created. May 5, God said, let there be light. May 10, Adam is created. So you've got Christ returning at the second coming on the date that Adam was created. That's what made made this reinforce that timeline as being something a little more interesting uh, to to look into rather than just uh, shrug it off as being, well, it's just landing on dates that are not significant. So, you know, it's landing on some interesting dates here, and I find that it's, it's it, you can't help but think, at least if you're me, you can't help but think that for him, Christ to return at the second coming on the day that Adam was created, that's, that's exciting, okay? Uh, Christ being the second Adam. Uh, and so that's how the timeline went. And then it went on over into the kingdom period after that. And we thought that this was as good or as strong a timeline as the one that we had back in 2016, which led up to the Revelation 12 sign in 2017. Uh, The timeline factually, as far as numbers went, as far as the, the actual mathematics of it went, it was bulletproof. It was, uh, it was worthy of consideration, something to, to get us excited, to spur us on, to, to further our testimony, to deeper our walk and our relationship with the Lord, to draw us closer to Him as the days melt away before He returns, to keep us on the edge of our seats, to get us excited, to spur us on to greater encouragement and love toward one another, okay? There's, don't let anybody tell you there's something wrong with that. Those who try to, 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 uh, slough off such nonsense as that have not really given much of a thought as to uh, the last uh, few words of, of our, our present study in Revelation, come Lord Jesus. We desire that our Lord come. There are those, uh, in fact, there's a reward given for loving His appearing. Uh, No, we haven't gone crazy. Uh, I think we're living in a world that's gone crazy, in which we are looking for His near return and hoping for that near return. And I hope that all of you stay encouraged because... uh, there are many things that will occur along our path that will, will that I think that Satan comes, he'll throw a wrench into the whole machinery of everything, and he'll do something to cause us to become discouraged, like he did me. Whenever I discovered that Torah calendar had changed its creation month and days the dates for the month and the day. It didn't change the year. Torah calendar kept the 3980 BC, which by the way, and I didn't keep in mind, folks, I did not, I had no part whatsoever in designing or constructing, nor do I have any any part in maintaining TorahCalendar.com. I have no association with it whatsoever. I have no influence over the the, the data that, that they project. And yet 3980 was what they listed as the creation year. Now, just 
some simple math will tell you that from 3980 BC to 2021 AD is because you don't count the zero in year zero as it crosses over from BC to AD is exactly 6,000 years. And Adam was given dominion for 6,000 years. All right. Now that begs another question. And, and we have to ask ourselves these questions. It helps, it helps that we ask ourselves these questions. Just because God gave Adam 6,000 years of, of dominion, does that mean that it can't be more? And I, I don't know. You'll have to answer that question for yourself. Is Torah calendar correct about the 3980 creation year? I don't know, folks. I don't know. Okay? All I'm, all I'm doing is passing along the information that I've seen that's, that's, that's made me excited about this. But they did change. They modified. They rearranged. They, they restructured. They, whatever, they updated. They revised their former projection of May 5. Okay, where that Adam's created was creation was May 10. You've got creation day one, May 5. Adam created May 10. They changed it. They changed it. And they did that to me right before, right before May. And of course, I went, well, what in the, in the world am I going to do now? Because this timeline looks so great. And so I want to talk about that. Now, now I'm going to talk about that. If you go to Torah calendar now, today, you will see that the, those dates have changed. It's no longer May. It's no longer May. What we see now is that creation day one occurred July the 7th. July 7th. Well, that's a little bit of a bummer. I thought, well, man, that's, that is. That's a bummer. Man, that completely takes it out of... Well, it doesn't completely take it out of spring, but it. But from May 17, that's, you know, all the way through June into July, July 7, uh, that's creation day one. Uh And, and I want to also point out the fact that there's a there's always a two day you're, you're looking at you're working with a two day thing here. If I say July 7, I may mean six and seven. OK, if I say July 12, I may mean July 12 and slash 13, you know, because the, the days run over each other. It's it's not where the day starts at midnight. It's sunset to sunset and so on and so forth. Uh but the, so the accuracy is within 24 hours. That's what I'm trying to say. So I run these these numbers ahead according to Torah calendars. Uh, uh, their magnificent changes that they've made for whatever reason I do not know because I've never been able to get in contact with with any of the webmasters there. July seven is creation day one okay so let's just and here's what i did i said okay all right i'm gonna start the rapture i'm gonna start the rapture on july the 7th first day of creation i'm just gonna see where that goes they're, they're gonna change the dates from may 5 it's no longer may 5 now it's july 7 i'm just gonna take I'm going to just start there, and I'm going to see where a timeline goes. I'm going to set those numbers in there that God gave us through Scripture, 1290, 1260, 1335. I'm going to take those, and I'm going to run those along a timeline, see where the dates go. So, uh, think of, of this. Think of July 7. If, if Torah calendar is correct, and maybe they should have left well enough alone, I, you know, You'll have to ask them that. But going by their new changes, if if you say, okay, July, okay, Torah calendar, you're saying that on July the 7th, God said, let there be light. Let, let there be light. Let there be light. Creation day one. I, I'm going to, on my timeline, I'm going to start the churches. 
the, the rapture there. The church is a new creation. Okay? Well, there's a little similarity there. you got, you know, creation day one, the church a new creation. Okay, raptured on the day that, that God said, let there be light. And we're going to go to the midpoint. We're going to go 1,290 days to a January the 22nd midpoint. January 22nd. Well, that's winter. A simple Google search will tell you. Uh, ask Google the simple question, you know, what are the winter months in Israel? January is one of them. January 22 is, is the mid, would be the midpoint. Uh, Jesus said, pray that your flight be not in winter. So I've got a, a January 22 uh, midpoint winter flight okay, uh, point on my timeline here. July 7 plus 1290 to January 22 midpoint. Now it's interesting that midpoint that's on that's the 11th month on the Hebrew calendar and it's the 11th day. Well, it's interesting. That's that's a lot of ones, four ones, 11 11 1 1 1 1 I don't know. I I'm still strongly of the mind that there are no coincidences anyway. So 11 means uh, it represents sin uh, wickedness rebellion it's it's the same as is as uh as uh 21 21 represent the number 21 repre represents uh, sin wickedness and rebellion whereas 20 uh, represents god's authority and so on and so forth same is true with 10 or uh, 11 where 10 is represents God's perfection but you take it one over of that 11 now you're into trouble deep you're into dark waters there with 11 11 represents sin so it's 11th month 11th day that January 22 midpoint well it's not all that interesting so far uh, or it didn't seem that in, that exciting to me so far I'd I'm still greatly in love with my former timeline that y'all had to go and change, but I'm going to keep going with this, and I'm going to add the 1260 days that the Antichrist reigns at, from that midpoint, January 22 midpoint. I'm going to go 1260 days forward, and it's going to take me to July 12, the day Adam is created. The changes that they made, July 7, creation day 1, July 12 would be the day Adam was created. So now I've got Christ returning on the day that Adam was created. Okay? Uh, it, it, did, it, doesn't, it didn't matter that they changed them. It's, it, it still comes out the same. So, well, now I'm a little more excited, and I'm, I'm really, I'm thinking, okay, now I've got, you know, I don't know if Torah Calendar was right about changing the dates or not, but I really love the former timeline, and now this new timeline is looking like it's running neck and neck with the, with, with the, the former timeline. I mean, they're both sort of on the same level as, you know, they're, as, as, as far as they're, they're competing with one another, they, they're both equally exciting. And uh, none, not one has an edge over the other. Okay? But you have to remember there are 1335 days, just as I did with the former timeline, 1335 days from the midpoint to the kingdom where the kingdom begins. 1335. 1290 of that being when the Antichrist rules and reigns. That means it's 12 or 1260 where the Antichrist is given 1260 days to reign. And then there's another 75 that, which makes up that 1335. That's 75 days. It's, it's, it's not a gap of inactivity. When Christ returns, he judges the nations. He separates the sheep from the goats. I could easily see that 75 days that being contained within that 75 days before the kingdom begins. 
But what fascinated me about this was that from July 12, that's the return of Christ, according to the modified, adjusted, revised Torah calendar, date change, menagerie, it just so happens that if you take it 1335 days from the return on July 12, 1335 days, it takes you to smack dab right into September 20, Feast of Trumpets, exact, exact. So you have the, the, the kingdom then would begin at the end of the timeline when you've ran through all of the days, you've gotten to the end of the 1335 days from the midpoint to the kingdom, and that date being September 20, Feast of Trumpets on Torah calendar, that put that, this new revised modified timeline data, if you want to call it that, at least with me, what it did was it, it, well, I just felt now I've got an even better timeline. I it, it, it didn't make it worse. It didn't, we didn't go from what was formerly a pretty good timeline, you know, in May uh, to uh, a really horrible timeline in July. The simple truth is, is if you, if you start, if we start this in July, if it starts, if it really happens in July, according to the changes to our calendar made, we've got a much more interesting timeline than what we did if it started in May. That's what I'm trying to tell you. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So there's a difference between the two timelines. The difference being that with the the former timeline, the church age would end on a Pentecost when it began. Uh, you know, May 17, 2021, Pentecost, or calendar. Uh, so it ends on a Pentecost. And then Christ returns on a date that Adam was created. And then the kingdom begins in July, okay, which uh, then leads up to the, the kingdom more that, uh, you know, he returns in July, he judges the nations, separates the sheep from the goats. Then you get into the, the fall feasts where that those three remaining fall feasts are fulfilled and the kingdom begins and that sort of thing. That's what we had with the May 17 Pentecost 2021 rapture timeline. Now with the second one, the, the one that's modified, we see that the church age ends on the first day of creation, not on Pentecost when it began. The church age would, would end on the first day, the same date as the first day of creation. Christ uh, presents his body, a new creation, faultless before God on the day that God spoke the worlds into existence and, and uh, presented the universe with a new uh, creation or just create it. That, that's interesting. And then Christ, the second Adam, returns on the day that Adam was created. On both times lines, you see Christ returning on the day that Adam was, was created. That's because of the number of, of days along the timeline. Creation day uh, being uh, day one, uh, the first day of creation. Uh, and then Adam created on the sixth day, so you, you got that separated by four days in between. And that, that four day in between separation there, it doesn't matter whether, uh, I, I don't know if I even know how to, how to say what I'm saying. All I'm saying is, is that even though they changed the, the creation month and day to July 7th, uh, first day of creation, July 7, Adam created July 12. Even though they changed it to that, when you run a timeline, you still have Christ returning on the date that Adam was created because of the number of days within a timeline. 
So the kingdom begins exactly at Feast of Trumpets. Now that's it. That's it. And uh, I thought about, well, you know, I'm going to do this video. I'm going to put up all these amazing graphics and I'm going to put these charts up here and these lines and these, you know, all this, this, these numbers and everything. And, and uh, maybe a picture is worth a thousand words and, and all that. I think if you just, if you just run through this video again and, and, and listen to it again, and then try to hang on every word I said, you'll see the simplicity in, in this, this whole uh, sequence of, of days along a timeline and where they, what, where they lead to, whether we're talking about, about May or whether we're talking about July, but I believe that we're it's, the evidence is strong for this year, folks. Uh, if it's not, uh, you know, I'm the, I'll be the first to admit that, 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 you know, nobody knows for sure. There's not a one of us, and I think we all know this. There's not a one of us that knows when our Lord's return will occur. And I understand that there are also no signs left to be fulfilled for him to return. And I, I also understand that there's been many generations that have come and gone before us that looked forward to his return, and, and he never did. Of course, I'm also of the mind that imminency, first and foremost, the reason why his return is always imminent in every generation is because we don't live that long. And so in a very real sense, you know, uh, we, we live in constant expectation of, re, of his return. Be, how? I mean, what, to see him actually appear where the, we're alive when he returns? Not necessarily. We can be, have died and, and we're, where that we are raised when he returns. The dead are raised as well as the living caught up. And so, and without going into the whole subject you know of our death being uh basically being the rapture uh which i've done in previous videos i just think that that even if he did not come in our lifetime while we were alive or that we saw his coming as as in and we were in living bodies when we when we saw him appear that our lives are, are, are a vapor, folks. They're so short that, uh, that we can live in expectation every day of meeting him at any moment because the fact of the matter is, is that if anything happens to us, whether we live or die, that's exactly what will occur. Look, I love you all. I truly do. I wanted to put this out for you to think about. We'll get back to our study in Revelation. We're still thinking about where we're going to go here in the meantime between now and uh, in, in spring or mid-spring in our studies, our verse-by-verse verse studies. I, I want to thank you all for all of the love and the support that you give this channel. I pray for you all constantly. Keep looking up. Rest in Him. Until next time, thanks for watching.